to the main Art Spirit Studio. Today I want to give a shout out to my 7th and 8th graders just to let them know that I really care about you. And also, especially as during this time, as we strive to keep our social distancing and sheltering in place, I want you to know that I think you're real champions. And what I'd like to do is to give you a lesson for the next month so that you could be working on that. I'd like to have you do a self-portrait. And I know uh, there are two seventh graders that are working with the uh, program of Show Me Who I Am. And what that program means is Show Maine Who I Am. So they have abbreviated Maine and it so show me who I am was what it's been called, but it, really that's what it means. So that means that they're going to have a show. Those two students, I hope you keep working on your uh, self-portrait. And I've kind of helped you so far to get that going. And I'd like to give that same assignment to the rest of the students in the, in the class. And just basically what that means is I'd like to have you do a self-portrait based on the photograph that you already have on your laptop or a photograph that you might want to do of yourself uh, while you're home. You may take another photograph or you may have a picture that you like and I would love to have you do that. And at the end of a month, like the end of this month, I would love to see them if you could actually email them to me. Um, somehow I'd like to, to take a look at them and show uh, me uh, what you've done. And so what I'm going to do is break this series up into four parts. It's going to basically be, uh, today will be the proportion of facial uh, measurements and how to get that right. And I've done a drawing as you see behind me and I'm going to show you that up close in a minute. And then using colored pencils, uh, how you can continue to uh, do the mouth and the nose and then where the ears lie and the hair and basically all of those parts. And then finally, to do a detailed uh, background and detailing everything to make it look very realistic. I'm very excited to work with you on this project, and I'll see you in a minute. We'll get a little closer so you can actually see the drawing behind me a little better, and also uh, see how I'm actually drawing. Okay, to uh, start out, I wanted to show you this postcard that I got from uh, Robert Shutterly, and it's one of his paintings. It's actually a painting uh, that's probably about 30 inches by 24, or something like that, or 30 by 40 inches. It's pretty large, and a lot of uh, these paintings were on display when we went to the college to actually meet with him. And I wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about this uh, portrait of this woman. It's Terry Tempest Williams. And her quote down here, I don't know if you can read it. It's really, really light, but when you're in the presence of these paintings, they're very clear. It says, the eyes of the future are looking back at us, and they are praying for us to see beyond our own time. I think that's incredibly apropos and appropriate for this time when we're actually um, looking at how our actions are going to impact the future and um, people and the lives of others. So I want to tell you a little bit about her. She actually, um, it says right here, the Ecology Hall of Fame, adding Terry Williams to its honorees, noted that she combines all the major strains of environmental passion. Her life has focused on opposing resource destruction, especially that affecting human health, a love for the desert and other naturally beautiful places, the land stewardship over many generations, which tie, ties her to the region where she was born and still lives. Williams is perhaps best known for her book, Refuge, an unnatural history of family, and place, in which she chronicles the epic rise of Great Salt Lake and the flooding of the Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge in 1983, along 
side, her mother's diagnosis with ovarian cancer, believed to be caused by radioactive fallout from the nuclear test in the Nevada desert in the 1950s and 60s. Refuge, that book, is now regarded as a classic in American nature writing. Her new book, Finding Beauty in a Broken World, was published in 2008. And there's a lot more to read about her, but it just shows that every one of us has a story. And just like I'm doing here, I'm making a self-portrait that represents my story. And at the very, very top, as I pan up really slow, I don't know if I can do it here, uh, you'll see I have left a little space for my name that's gonna go up here. It'll be Michael Ernest Vermette. And then if I pan down again, down to here, you can see I have quite a lot of space on the bottom where I can actually write um, what I believe in, a statement. So that's what those uh, other two middle school students are doing. They're actually creating a, their story and they're going to take a sentence out of that story or a quote and put it here and put their name at the top. So for this exercise, I'd love to have you do something like that um, as we uh, are practicing staying at home and being safe, that we can get our minds off the fear of all of this and maybe, you know, just, just uh, put ourselves into a drawing that helps us identify who we are. You're going to need colored pencils, a set of them. I don't know if you have them. If you don't, uh, colored crayons, uh, pastels, anything like that. Uh, would be appropriate for this. Colored pencils are a little better because they're going to be able to make a very much finer uh, kind of mark and you might uh, actually like that better. And as I get a little closer, I think what we want to do today is we want to work on the eyes. So we're going to work on the eyes today and I'm going to show you how to do a few eyes. Uh, first of all, one of the things that Robert Shutterly said, and you want to measure like this with the point of your pencil and measure with your thumb down. And basically from here to here is a measurement of the length of my eye. And you'll find that this eye over here is a little smaller because my head is turned. So whenever your head is turned, this is going to, whatever's farther away is going to be smaller than the eye here, which is going to be larger. Also, my head is at a tilt. So if, and also that means if it's at a tilt this way, it's going to be at a tilt this way. That means my eyebrows are gonna be located there. And so is my mouth gonna be located on that tilt. It's not gonna be good if my mouth is like that, my eyes are like that, and my eyebrows are like that. They're gonna, it's gonna make me look different than I really am. And that's one of the things I'm gonna want you to check proportionately. Here's that other proportion, the eye is actually one eye between the two eyes. So this eye, the distance between the larger one that's closest to me from one corner of the eye to the other is about the distance between here and here. And then this is going to be probably three quarters of the actual distance, almost as big as this eye, but a little smaller. As you can see, it's just about, you know, a quarter of an inch smaller. So that's one thing I want you to look at. So as you begin to draw your eye, look at the fact that there's a whole eye in between space, a whole eye space in between the two eyes. And so that's what I want you to do is to think about that. Also think about the fact that your eyelids shade your eye quite a lot. They shade it and they create that kind of shaded realism. I'm working from a photograph. You can actually work from a photograph too or uh, if you don't have access to a printer, then what you can do is work directly from your laptop. I have this on my laptop as well, and sometimes it's a little clearer to work with from your laptop. So I'm gonna start to shade in my eye, because my eyes are blue, and once I start with my blue, you're gonna find this too. Um, as you start shading, keep your lines close together and actually have your lines shading and kind of um, you know marking on top of each other. So it creates a nice shade. Both of these eyes have a little bit of a start of blue. So I'm going to do that right now. 
And um, you can see in my drawing that I actually had darker places and lighter places in the drawing. The lighter places represent where it's very, very light, and the darker pl uh, lines actually represent uh, the shaded areas to remind me that I need to get darker. And I'm going to add uh, pretty much right halfway through the eye. You're going to get a little darker right in there like that. And you, that violet is a very good color, but it's also, and I'm just going to shade the colored part of this right down, almost down to the, the pupil of my eye right there. And it'd be also good to add a highlight, but we'll do that a little later. A highlight could be added and it kind of adds a little bit of realism if you add a little bit of a highlight and kind of uh, leave a little bit of light, you know, where the eye actually, um, iris actually is. The other color I want to use is kind of a little bit of a black. I'm going to go with black on top of this. Um, they work really good, you know, the blue and the black. And then I'm going to really blacken my pupil. That's really important that you get a very, very dark area for your pupil. And it'll start looking pretty good if you do. Now this pupil is, I've noticed, a little bit bigger than that. So I'm going to make this one about the same size. So that looks actually pretty good the way that is. And already, just by the shading of the top, it's looking very, very good. So now I want to do is, what I want to do is create a little bit of a, a light, light pink. Now this light pink is so light, you probably won't be able to detect it from the film. So um, what a lot of great painters have done is that the color of the whites of the eye really represent more of a violet or a pinkish violet than they do an absolute white. So you want to be careful you don't get too white. You can always add white to that pink. And then you want to add a tiny bit of violet to it. If you have violet, that would be great. So when you add the violet, be careful that you don't get too dark because you can go way overboard and it can kind of bully your color palette. So go really, really slow. Here on the top of your eye, you want to shade that out. You want to shade that out just a bit like that. And that's great right there. And, you know, getting those eyes to look real is, is very important. Um, I do have a little bit of turquoise, so I'm going to add green to my eyes. Just a little bit of green, not too much. And I'm going to try to get those colors right. And I'm going to go darker, especially on the edges of your iris right there. You're going to get really, really dark. And this is a darker greenish color right in there. I'm going to add more darker colors in a little bit, but right now I want to, you know, kind of emphasize this little bit of dark blue. And then right here, um, as the photograph suggests, my eye gets a little darker here, and it gets a little darker here. See how I'm keeping my lines close together so that they actually shade very realistically. And then I'm going to go back in. And I'm going to darken things. I'm going to put a little bit of black there. Now, adding too much black can actually steal the light and the color from your art. You may not like that, but I'm going to get a little darker now, especially on the edges as I'm looking and comparing. And it's looking very translucent as I add more contrast, which means as I add more dark against the light, it's actually looking pretty good. And I'm going to leave a little tiny bit of a highlight right there as I go around it like that. And I'm going to darken all of this just a tiny bit, just like that. And there are my realistic eyes. So then we're going to do a little bit of the skin. The skin is going to have this peach. My skin is uh, very, very light. So depending on the color of your skin, you're going to have to use the color that it actually represents. So if you have a darker brown skin or whatever color your skin is, there is no right or wrong flesh tone. So there are many, many flesh tones out there. So to use, uh, to kind of feel around for the color that you want to use, you probably want to use a brown. A brown will neutralize and it won't be black, but it'll be a color that will actually start to look pretty good. And it won't be as dark valued as black is. So you'll be able to correct it a whole lot easier. This is a dark bag under my eye, so yeah, I know. 
So anyway, we're gonna make that dark. And then I'm gonna lighten this with a little bit of peach. And it, to me, it just feels way too pinkish. So I'm probably going to go back in and try to get all those white specks and go back in and try to make it uh, with a little more uh, violet. And there's this kind of be beautiful violet here I'm gonna add to kind of violet these eyes out. And then I'm gonna add some red, just like that. And then right here in the corner, it's going to get very, very light too. I mean, it is very light. I want to make it a little darker so that this whole area in here gets lost. This whole thing um, is going to get a little more blackish. This is the corner of the eye. And I want that to be really dark. And this too. So that my eyes start to look very realistic really makes them come forward. Same with the bottom, not too much on the bottom. And there are, you, you do have a tiny bit of eyelashes and you know, when you go and do little bumps like this, it'll create a sense of eyelash or you can put them on there, but you're not gonna need a, you know, much there to create an eyelash. And then I'm going to add more of this peach color and I can see already that it's not going to be dark enough so I'm going to light uh, you know darken this over my light color and right in here I'm going to make that a whole lot dark this is the corner of the mouth one of the things you have to realize um, about making an eye look very realistic is that you are actually drawing a socket that is that actually goes in to the skull so your eye sets in the socket, and because of that, you're going to have to set that in. Um, and you're gonna have a lot of crevices and dark shadows. So if you look at the photograph, you're gonna find that there's a shadowy area here, there's a shadowy area here, and there's a shadow under the chin and under the lips. So what we're working on now is creating that socket effect that look like it's actually going into a socket. And so when you get to this point, when you've done your drawing and I've done mostly an outline drawing and you've actually started to shade eyes that look pretty good, I think you've done a lot and that's going to be fantastic. So I hope that uh, this has helped you. I'm going to finish these eyes while you're gone and we'll work on the nose and the mouth next time in next class. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, this has been a, a wonderful time of drawing with you. I don't want to keep these videos too long, but I do want to do show you how you can add multiple colors and get all of those specks in between and keep your, your um, lines and shading really tight so you can create a very realistic drawing. And don't be afraid to get really dark when you need to get really dark. Like in here. Even with uh, a dark uh, blue or a dark uh, navy blue. And if it's too dark for you, you can get a dark red. And if you have these uh, in crayons, or if you have less crayons, but more pastel, I actually would have most of these. Uh, that would be fantastic if you can actually, some of you have uh, won Wabanaki Student Art Show in the past, and you have these kits just sitting around. And it would be fantastic if you started to to draw and started to utilize some of this because one of the things we have now is a lot of time and a lot of time to concentrate and this would be a great time for you to think about what it is that your story is and what you would like to tell. And, um, and that's about it for today. Hope you enjoyed this uh, demonstration so far and I will continue to draw and get back to you.